Hello and welcome to Empowered Learning. This is the third video in the video series on applications for exponential and logarithmic equations. And so this video will be about a specific uh, concept of Newton's law of heating and cooling. And as you can see here, um, this is the basic equation that we have. And notice that, of course, it has a term that has an exponential function in it. So hence why it's part of this application. And so we see that this general equation here kind of governs in, in, a, in a very, I'll say, crude way um, what happens whenever something uh, is being heated or being cooled by its environment. And so we're going to take some time to unpack uh, what all of these terms mean in this particular equation. And then after that, we're going to do several examples, uh, getting a good idea of how we would use this particular equation uh, to solve problems. So first, again, we see here we have this equation and uh, we know that our T sub zero that's right here will be our initial temperature. And that's going to be the initial temperature of whatever object um, that you know, we are looking at that's either going to be heated or cooled down. This T sub A here is going to be the temperature of the environment surrounding the object. And of course, uh, big, big T of little t, um, of course, the big T means temperature, little t means time. Okay. Now, this K that's right here that is in our exponent, that is going to either be our, uh, in this particular case, either heating constant if K is positive or a cooling constant if K is negative. And so with that, uh, we pretty much know um, what everything means. And so we're starting off essentially with some ambient temperature. Of course, this is the difference in between the the actual temperature of the object and uh, the ambient temperature. And then, of course, we know that's either going to increase or decrease um, exponentially speaking, uh, depending upon what we're doing, heating or cooling. All right. So let's look at our first example. So in this example, we have a person named Lamar and he poured himself some tea in a cup that had an initial temperature of 202 degrees Fahrenheit. Immediately after pouring the drink, he sat it down on the kitchen table to cool down. The temperature of the kitchen was at a constant 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if this drink cooled to 178 degrees Fahrenheit in four minutes, how long will it take for the tea to cool down to 105 degrees? Okay, so that is our problem. So the first thing that we know is that we're going to be using this equation here. Um, T of T is equal to T sub A plus difference in between the temperature of the object initially and the ambient temperature E raised to the KT. Now, since we are trying to cool down the drink, we know that in this case, K is going to be uh, negative or less than zero. Now, let's kind of gather everything that we, we uh, saw here. We know that our initial temperature of this cup of tea was 202 degrees Fahrenheit. We also know that the ambient temperature in the kitchen was 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we know also here, and, and I'm going to kind of just write it up here, that since this is the initial temperature, this will be the temperature at time t equals zero. So I'm just going to write it equals uh, t sub zero, t of zero there. Okay. Now uh, we were also given that, of course, um, at four minutes, and we're going to assume here that t is being measured in minutes here. That um, four minutes from whenever you know we pour. Uh, the tea in a cup, we know that we're now at 178 degrees Fahrenheit for the temperature of the tea. So we have all of this information um, available to us. And so the first thing that we need to do is be able to find a corresponding value of K 
that's going to give us everything that we need for this equation so that we can actually answer this question that's in the last sentence. Okay. So, um, of course, here, how long will it take for the T to cool down to 105 degrees? Um, what, what we're essentially trying to figure out is this, and I'm going to write it this way. T is equal to what? When the T is at 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And so we're trying to figure out what this value of T is, essentially. Um, and of course, to do that, the first thing that we have to do is figure out what K is because we don't know how fast um, the T is actually cooling down. And we have to use that information and be able to figure it out. So we're going to plug in what we know and then use that uh, to be able to find out what K is. So we're going to use this piece of information to uh, get us started here. So we know that T of 4 or uh, the, the temperature at four minutes is 178. And that implies that, uh, and now we're going to plug in everything that we know here. So our T sub A is 68 plus our initial temperature was 202 minus the 68. And then we have E raised to the K. And of course here we know that our T is going to be four in this instance. And we know that this result is 178 degrees. So with that, all we need to do now is take this exponential equation that we have and essentially solve for K. So to do that, of course, the first thing that we need to do is subtract 68 from both sides here. So if we go ahead and do that. And I'll just do it like this, but I'll write the result over here. Um, we know that if we do that, we're going to get 110 on the right hand side. Okay. And here we know that that 202 minus um, 68, uh, that's going to give us 134. Okay. So we can go ahead and say that's 134. So we know that we have 134 e raised to the 4k and that's going to be equal to 110 okay so therefore from there we need to get k by itself um, probably the safest thing to do at this point is to divide both sides by 134 and so if we do that we'll get e raised to the 4k is equal to 110 divided by 134. And if we simplify 110 um, divided by 134, we're going to get 55 divided by 67. Okay, just basically uh, dividing the numerator and the denominator by two. So from here, here is where we actually use our techniques of solving exponential equations at this point. And so uh, you have a couple of different ways of doing this. Um, what I'm going to do just to kind of keep it simple is I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And if I do that, we know that this left hand side here, because of what we know about um, logarithms and their properties, um, this is kind of like log base E of E raised to the 4K. And we know that whenever the base for the logarithm and the base for the expression inside the logarithm match, we know that whatever this exponent is, is that answer. So, um, of course, that means that the, the left hand side is just going to be 4K. So here we have 4K is equal to natural log of 55 divided by 67. And then um, that lets us know here that K is just going to be um, everything that's on the right hand side divided by four. And um, I could rewrite that as one fourth natural log of 55 over 67. Okay. Now, um, one thing I do want to say before we continue. Um, I am going to actually keep the value of K in this form. And part of the reason for that is that I want my answers to be as accurate as possible. 
for those of you that are watching this video, you're probably trying to do this for a, a course that you're in. And normally you'll see uh, the, the authors of the textbooks, they'll go and give you an approximate value for uh, this particular number and then use that um, in, in our equation here to kind of give you a, a closed form. But what they're doing is approximating according, according to how um, accurate they think you should be. Um, I don't leave that kind of stuff to chance in these videos. So um, I don't round until the end. And that's essentially what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to keep it like this. And you'll see that if we keep our K like this, um, when we go back and substitute it into this equation here, is actually going to give us a cleaner way of being able to express our function exponential. Um, it may be different than what you're used to seeing, but it is a more accurate and cleaner way of doing it. So uh, we're going to continue on now, substitute back in K into our equation to get what that should look like. And then we're going to answer uh, the question that we have in front of us. All right, so now that we know what K is, we can go ahead and plug it back into our original equation here. So we have T of T is equal to T sub A, which we know is going to be 68, plus uh, T sub zero minus T sub A, and that's uh, going to be the difference in between 202 and 68, which is 134. And then of course we have E raised to the K T. And so we know here that this K is just going to be all this business here. So I'm going to erase and actually write that in now. So it's going to be one fourth natural log of 55 over 67. And then all of that will be raised to the power of T. That's uh, one way that we can write it. Okay. So uh, just in case you forgot, and let me make sure that this is clear. So here uh, we would normally write it like this, or you could put the T right here and do it like that to have K times T. But when you do that, uh, notice that we have an exponential rule that says anytime we have something raised to an exponent, and um, we have another exponent being um, in the same exponent area, as I like to put it. So basically, we have an exponential expression raised to another exponent. We can multiply the exponents here. Okay. So right now, what we have um, with this e raised to the t divided by four times natural log of fifty, natural log of fifty-five over sixty-seven is this, and what we want to change it to is that, and to make it convenient for us, we want the T to be the thing that's on the outside. So where this N is. So that is why uh, when I originally wrote this, I wrote it where the T was going to be on the outside of the parenthesis there. Okay. So hopefully that will make sense as to why I'm doing it. And you'll see that this will end up being something uh, very clean for us in the long run here. Okay. Now, um, another thing I want to address here is that we have one fourth times all of this. And so I could do more than just take the T out. I could take the one fourth out as well. So here I could have the one fourth there and uh, try to erase here. And I can just leave the E, uh, the natural log of 55 divided by 67 um, in the exponent part. Okay, so if I did that, then that gives me a way to be able to express this in a clean way, because now we see that E raised to the natural log of 55 divided by 67, that is just going to be 55 over 67. And the reason for that is that we have this logarithmic property that says anytime we have uh, some number or expression raised to the log of whatever the same base here is um, of x, we know that the answer is just x. Okay, so all the stuff that's on the inside here just ends up being 55 divided by 67. 
Okay, and we can put this as t divided by four. And so with us writing it like that, uh, this is the most accurate form of this particular temperature function based upon our model. And so now that we have that, um, depending upon, you know, if you're doing this problem and you're going to have to, you know, enter answers in uh, into some, you know, system or you're doing it manually, um, you'll have the most accurate form. So uh, based upon if you need to round uh, two decimal places, three decimal places, four decimal places, um, you can do that after you're actually getting your answer. So now that we have what our temperature equation should be, we can use it to be able to answer the, the question that we were originally asked. And if you remember, essentially this is what was being asked, and I'm going to put it in abbreviated form. We want to know what the temperature is, uh, sorry, what the time is for this particular temperature function when the temperature is 105 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what we want to know. So essentially we need to let uh, big T of little t equal 105 and solve for t at this point. So that's what we're going to do. So if we do that, then we have 68 plus 134 times 55 divided by 67 raised to the t over 4, and that is going to equal to um, 105. And so now all we have to do is solve for t once we do that. All right, so now with this, of course, we need to solve for t, and uh, we got a long way to go before we get to it. Uh, but the first thing that we can do, of course, is subtract both sides by 68 again. And if we do that, um, we'll see that what we end up getting is uh, 37 for that. So we'll have uh, 37. Well, actually, let me write this on the other side, kind of keep it consistent. So we'll have 134 times 55 divided by 67, all that raised to the t divided by 4, and that is going to equal to um, 37. And the next thing, of course, uh, to get to this t, we have to first get rid of this 134 legally. So we're going to divide both sides by 134. And so that's going to end up being 55 divided by 67. All that raised to the t divided by 4 is equal to 37 divided by 134. Okay. Now, um, one, uh, 37 is a prime number, so there's not going to be any reducing that fraction anymore. So we're just going to keep it how it is. At this point, um, we realize here that we need to get this t out of the exponent. And again, there are several different ways to do that. Um, I'm going to keep it simple just by taking the natural log of both sides. So if I do that, then I'll have natural log of, and then this will be 55 over 67 raised to the t divided by 4. And this will be natural log of 37 divided by 134. And so now that uh, we have this written this way, we know that this exponent that we have here of uh, t divided by 4, I'm going to rewrite it here, we could take that and pull it out in front if we want. Okay? And again, there's, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, you could just pull out the t itself and leave the 1 fourth in the exponent and just make that the fourth root of uh, 55 divided by 67, or you can pull out the entire um, exponent, t divided by 4, and that's what I'm going to do, okay? So if I do that, this would be here. Now t divided by 4 um, times natural log of 55 over 67. And then, of course, the right-hand side stays the same. So from here, what I need to do again is to get t by itself. And I essentially have a one-fourth times this number, natural log of 
of 55 divided by 67 that I need to get rid of legally. So how I'm going to do that is I'm first going to multiply both sides by four. Okay. So I'm going to multiply both sides by four here. And what that does is basically gets rid of that fraction there. So I'll just have T times natural log of 55 divided by 67. And on the right hand side, I'll have four times natural log of 37 over 134. Okay. Now, at this point to solve for T, I could just divide both sides by natural log of 55 divided by 67. But what I'm going to do to make this a little bit cleaner is I'm going to use this logarithmic property that allowed me to take this T divided by four out of the exponent. I'm going to reverse that by taking it and putting it back in the exponent, but I'm going to do it with the four. So I'm going to take this four here and put it back in the exponent here. So what that's going to look like is natural log of, and then I'll have to put 37 divided by 134 in parentheses and raise all of that to the four. Okay. And the, the reason I'm doing that is because if you need to put this into your calculator to be able to get an approximate answer, you want to write it in a way to where you're going to have as few uh, possible mistakes um, when you're typing it in as possible. And so that's just a, a rule of thumb that I use. Um, you could use it or you could not use it depending upon how comfortable you are plugging in things into your or typing in things into your calculator rather. So at this point, um, we are almost to our answer here. And so all I need to do is divide both sides of this equation here by this natural log of 55 divided by 67. And so when I do that, I know that T is going to be natural log of 37 over 134 raised to the four. And all that's divided by natural log of 55 divided by 67. And this will be your exact answer for this particular problem. Now, if you plug this into your calculator here, uh, you'll end up getting T is approximately equal to 26.082846. sorry, 280456. And uh, depending upon how accurate you have to be, um, you may just need, all right, it's roughly 26 minutes, or you may need to know that it's 26.082 minutes. So it just kind of depends. Doing the problem this way allows you to be as accurate and still be correct um, without having any rounding error. Okay? So this is the answer to that question. Um, it did take us a while to get there, uh, mainly because uh, we had to solve for what K was first. And then I wanted to make sure that I uh, clearly explained what went on here in this equation. Uh, to solve for it. And again, this is just one of many ways that, that you can do it, um, but I'm trying to use a way that I think will probably be the easiest. Okay, So that is the answer to our first question here. So now let's move on to our second example. Before we actually go to our second example, there was one thing that I forgot to mention uh, to kind of make this all clear just in case uh, someone missed this. And I'm going to go back to here where we were talking about our value of K. Now, I told you that in the beginning of this problem that K had to be negative. And of course, the way that K looks here, it doesn't look like it's negative, but it actually is. And so part of the reason for that is that we know that anytime we take the natural log of a proper fraction, that value is going to be negative. And here is why that is. If you look at the graph of a basic logarithmic function and this it doesn't matter what type of logarithmic function you're looking at they're all going to have this basic profile uh, we know that all logarithmic functions no matter the base um, has a point one zero on this graph and the graph just essentially kind of looks like this okay and of course um, if we don't have any horizontal shifting or anything we have a vertical asymptote here on uh, the y-axis. 
So the point that I'm trying to make is that 55 divided by 67 is like a value that's right here. It's in between 0 and 1. And if you know this, this is mapping to a point on the graph of our function where this should be a negative value because it's below the x-axis here. Okay? And so that's just for the natural log of 55 divided by 67 part. Of course, if we multiply that times one fourth, that would just be a fourth of that, which would probably be some number that's over here. That's even more negative than what we talked about before. OK, so even though we didn't you know, explicitly see that negative sign, we know that this particular quantity here is negative because we're taking the natural log of some uh, number here that is in between zero and one. And then, of course, we're multiplying by a number that makes it you know, less so. Okay. So I hope that's clear. And now we'll actually move on to our second example. So for our second example, this is another uh, Newton's law of cooling type problem. And uh, we have a thermometer reading of 72 degrees Fahrenheit that's placed in the refrigerator um, where the temperature is at a constant of 38 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, we basically, wherever we just came from with our thermometer, um, it was 72 degrees Fahrenheit in that particular environment, and then we stick it in a refrigerator. So more than likely, we're like in our kitchen or something. And of course, in the refrigerator, it's a constant 38 degrees Fahrenheit. And we have a few questions that we want to get answered here. The first of these questions is, if the thermometer reads 60 degrees after two minutes of being in the refrigerator, what will it read after seven minutes? Okay. So as you can see, this problem is very similar to the one that we just did in example one. The only thing that's different now is the uh, the, the content, meaning uh, now we're talking about uh, thermometers instead of cups of tea. Okay. So here, let's remind ourselves that this is our equation that we're going to use to model this situation. And let's make that K look a little better here. Try that one more time. <laughs> and we know here that our K is going to be negative. So that lets us know that, of course, that we're actually doing cooling to the object. Okay. So we know that our thermometer reading uh, initially uh, is reading 72 degrees. So this is going to be the initial temperature. We know that the ambient temperature of the environment that we're trying to cool it in, which is here, will be 38 degrees. Okay. And so um, we know in this first question, we're also given here that basically T of 2 is going to be 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And what we're trying to figure out is when we are at time seven minutes, what is the temperature going to be? So we're going to use this equation again, fill in all our information, and then, of course, from there, figure out what K is. And then once we figure out what K is, it'll be real simple to figure out what uh, temperature is at the seven minute mark. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. So we know from this equation here, we're going to have big T of little t is equal to 38 minus the difference in between 72 and 38 e raised to the k. And now we're going to apply what we have here. So I'm going to plug in a 2 here. And what I'll do here is erase that t. We'll put in a 2 there and just say that, all right, this equals to 60. So when we do that, um, of course, here we have 60 is equal to 38 minus. And so now um, when we subtract 38 from 72, we're going to get 34. And that's e raised to the 2k. And now, of course, we just need to solve for k. So 
here, the first thing that we can do is subtract 38 from both sides. So if I was to go ahead and do that, then you'll see that I'll get 22 here. And this will be E raised to the, and oh, I have a minus here and that should be a plus. So let me fix that. Yeah, sorry about that, y'all. And so this should be 34 E raised to the 2K. And now of course to solve for K, we need to get rid of this 34 here legally. So we just divide both sides by 34. So I'll go ahead and write it here too. Of course, these 34 is reduced to one. And all we have left here is E raised to the 2K. And so just like how we did before, um, I could take the natural log of both sides. Um, when I do that, I'll just kind of stick to doing it that way. We know that the right hand side, based upon what we did in example one, all of this is just going to equal 2K. And so now to get K by itself, we just divide both sides by two. So we're going to take this last part here and this and divide it by two. And we see that K just ends up being one half of natural log of 22 over 34. Okay. And again, you can see that because we have 22 divided by 34, that's a proper fraction. We know that um, natural log of that is just going to be some negative number. And then, of course, if we have that negative number, it's still going to be negative. So we know that this indeed is uh, negative or less than zero. So now that we have what K is, we can now come back and say, all right, well, big T of little t is just going to equal to ambient temperature of 38 plus difference in between 72 and 38, which was 34. And this is E raised to the uh, KT. And of course, our value of K is going to be one half natural log of 22 divided by 34. And like we said before, we could take that and multiply it by T there since all of this in the exponent represents KT. But we know that per our exponential rules, uh, we could rewrite this this way so that all this business that we deal with here on the inside um, will be a little bit easier. And we also did this too. Let me yeah. So we also took the one half and said, let's go ahead and pull that out as well. And so with that, we just have this E raised to the natural log of 22 divided by 34 on the inside. And we know that everything that's on the inside here is just a fancy way of saying 22 divided by 34. And so that is what our function big T of little t is. And so I'll go ahead and box that in because that's what we'll use to answer our question. So now that we know um, we know our complete model for uh, the temperature function with respect to time, all we need to do now is to plug in 7 into where we have t here and figure out what our answer is. So we'll just have 38 plus 34 times 22 divided by 34, all that raised to the 7 divided by 2. And of course, if you plug that into your calculator, what you would get here is uh, 45.409.38. 378 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And most of you will probably not need to be that um, accurate. Uh, 45.4 or 45.41 uh, may work for you. But again, um, I'm the type I like to be as accurate as possible um, so that my answers don't uh, kind of float off or are incorrect due to rounding error. Okay. So that is what 
example A is, let's look at what um, example 2A is. Let's look at what example 2B asks us now. All right, so our next question here, we want to know how long will it take before the, th the thermometer reaches 39 degrees? So put that in another way. Uh, what we're trying to say here is what's going to be the time I will need to have to be able to have uh, 39 degrees Fahrenheit read on the thermometer. So basically let um, the equation on the left hand side equal 39 solve for T. That's essentially what we're doing. Here. So um, if we do that um, using this equation again, um, and let me write down everything like how we had it. So this was 38 plus 34 times 22 over 34. All that raised to the T divided by 2. And we're letting this equal to 39. Okay. So if we do that, then of course, um, to get to this T, the first thing we have to do is get rid of this term. So we'll need to subtract 38 from both sides here. Okay. And if we do that, then of course that just leaves us with a one over here, 34 times 22 over 34. And all of that will be raised to the one half T. Uh, just like how we did before, we need to divide both sides of our equation by 34. And if we do that, then we just have 1 34th is equal to 22 over 34 raised to the 1 half T. And then what we can do is uh, take both uh, sides here and, and um, do the natural log of both sides. Um, I'm doing natural log, but you could do log base 10 or any other base that you want it. Um, but I just choose to use natural log. So now from here, what we know is I can take this particular exponent here and I can pull it out in front. And if we do that, we'll have natural log of 1 over 34 equals to 1 half t times natural log of 22 over 34. And so at this point, we have two more steps. Um, one is to multiply both sides by two, and I'm going to go ahead and do that now uh, just to save a little space. So I'll come here and we'll do that. Say multiply by two. That makes these twos reduce to one. And so now notice here that we have two times natural log of one over 34. And what I could do is take that two and put it back in the exponent here. And so what that's going to be is natural log of, and let me, I'm going to write this differently. Natural log of 1 divided by 34 quantity squared. And on the right hand side, I'm just going to have t times natural log of 22 over 34. And then finally, um, what we could do is just divide both sides by natural log of 22 over 34. And we'll end up getting what t is on its own. So t would be equal to um, natural log of 1 over 34 quantity squared. And if you want, you can figure out what 1 um, divided by 34 quantity squared is. I don't know why I put a 1 half there. It's supposed to be squared. And take that, divide that by natural log of 22 over 34. And that is your exact answer. And of course, um, if we were to um, put this in our calculators here, um, this answer would end up being, uh, let's say, 16.201305 for seven minutes. Okay, 
So roughly just a little over 16 minutes um, that thermometer will have its reading go from being 72 degrees down to uh, 39 degrees. Okay, so as you can see, not that long. All right, so let's look at part C of this same example. So for part C of this same example here, uh, we want to determine the time that must elapse before the thermometer reads 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So I put this in here because this particular problem is just like part B. It's just phrased different. So I wanted you to, to be able to see that, hey, we can ask the same thing in various ways. So when this says determine the time, of course, we're trying to figure out what's going to be our time when temperature is 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's just another way of me saying what I did before. What is that going to be essentially? So um, we're going to use the same uh, technique as we did before. So uh, to not bore you with the details here, uh, what I'll do is just write everything out and then I'll post it. And uh, from there, you can kind of pause your video, look at it and just just make sure that all that stuff makes sense. Um, we'll be going through pretty much the same procedure as we did for example B. So um, nothing will be different. And so I'll, I'll do that and then we'll move on to part D of this particular example. And then, of course, we'll move on to other examples. All right, so uh, we have everything written here now. And so uh, we see that with our equation, if we go ahead and substitute in 45 for big T of little t, and of course subtract both sides by 38, we'll get seven. And then of course to get to this T, we have to get rid of this 34 first. So we divide both sides by 34. Then from there, um, we note that we uh, can take the natural log of both sides and we do that so that we can uh, take advantage of our logarithm properties that allow us to take this exponent here and pull it out in front. And so that's what this next step is. From there, we multiply both sides by two to get rid of that fraction. And also we know here that since we have some number of multiplied times and logarithmic expression, we could take that and put that back in the exponent per the uh, logarithm rules that we have. And we see that that's what this step is. And then finally, we divide both sides by natural log of 22 divided by 34 so that we can get T by itself. And that's what we have. And of course, uh, we see if we were to put that into our calculators and figure it out, it's roughly about two point, uh, sorry, 7.26 minutes. So, all right, so let's look at our final uh, part here for example two. So for part D and the final part of example two, we ask, uh, what do you notice about the temperature as time passes? So as time goes on from time t equals zero on to infinity, uh, we know that as that time increases, the temperature reading of the thermometer decreases, of course. And of course, that's what we were expecting in the problem. So um, not anything you know too revealing there. We just want to make sure that um, we do a sanity check and we're like, okay, well, if we're cooling something, then as time goes on, uh, the temperature of the object, in this case, the, th the thermometer should get lower and lower. Okay, so for the first two examples, uh, note that we actually did cooling examples of Newton's law of heating and cooling. And of course, in both of those cases, we knew that we were doing cooling because our uh, constant K that we have in our exponent, um, we saw that that constant was negative. So now what we're going to do is switch gears a bit here and actually do an example where we have some object actually heating up instead of cooling down. Yeah. So we're going to use the same thermometer here. Um, we have a thermometer that reads eight degrees Celsius and is brought into a room of a constant temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. So, of course, a uh, thermometer came from a cooler environment is going into um, a hotter environment. So if the thermometer reads 15 degrees Celsius after three minutes, what will it read after being in the room for? And then we're going to 
give various times. So again, just like how we've done in the first two examples, we use all the information that's given to us in order to figure out what our constant K is. And of course, that'll confirm whether we are actually uh, taking an object and heating it up or cooling it down. And then after that, we plug K back into our equation uh, to model the temperature of, of the thermometer in this case. And then uh, for part A here, all we'll have to do is let T equal five and then figure out what the corresponding temperature will be. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So again, we know that our equation that models this situation um, will be this. So that's our ambient temperature plus the difference in between the uh, temperature of the object and the ambient temperature, E raised to the KT. And then this time we are assuming that K is greater than zero. And we're actually going to confirm that uh, when we solve for K. So from here, if we plug in everything that we know, um, what we're given is we know that our thermometer reading initially reads eight degrees Celsius and the ambient temperature of where the thermometer is going is 35 degrees and here this piece of information basically tells us that if little t which is time is three minutes then the temperature is going to be 15 degrees Celsius so uh, that lets us know that this uh, T of 3 in this case here, that is going to be 15. And we're just going to plug in everything else. So our ambient temperature is 35 plus. Um, we have a difference here of, let's see, T sub 0 is 8 minus 35. And this is E raised to the K, which we're trying to solve for. And three is what T is at that particular time. So, of course, all this means here that we have 15 is equal to 35 minus 27, because eight minus 35 is 27, E raised to the three K. And here we need to first sub subtract both sides by 35. If we do that, then of course, uh, that gives us a minus 20 is equal to a minus 27 um, times E raised to the 3K. You need to get K by itself. So here we need to divide both sides by uh, a negative 27. And so uh, in doing that, um, what we see here is that we end up getting a positive 20 over 27 because a negative divided by negative is a positive e raised to the 3k. And of course, from here, we can take the natural log of both sides of this equation. And we know that this right hand side, all of that is just going to equal 3k. So therefore, that natural log of 20 divided by 27 is equal to 3K. And we just divide both sides by three to get our final answer there. And let me move this over here. So K is just going to be one third of natural log of 20 over 27. And so this will be um, our exact answer for K. Now, before we move on, um, I want to point something out here that may seem strange if you're looking at this and you're looking at it closely. Notice that our value of K, based upon what we learned in the first two examples, notice that it's negative. OK. And here, what we said was that we expected our value of K to be positive. Now, why is that? Okay. And um, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this particular example is to kind of explain what's going on so that 
we can I can bring some clarity to what this model is actually trying to say. Okay. To do that, we need to go back to the very beginning, and I need to give you an assumption that I didn't give you before. Um, that's usually not given because whenever we calculate this, we find that we really don't need to know it. But um, it's useful to to talk about that now, being that uh, we've expected k to be one type of value and it's another. So I'm going to go back to the very uh, beginning of our lecture when we talked about the actual uh, model for temperature and kind of explain what's going on. All right, so if we go back to um, how we originally defined everything here, um, notice that we said that K had to be a positive value um, whenever we were talking about heating and K had to be a negative value whenever we were talking about cooling. Now, the thing that's not said here is that for these two situations, what we are assuming here is that this value of t sub zero minus t sub a is always going to be non-negative, meaning that we are actually looking at the absolute value of the difference in between these two, okay? So for the cooling type problems, this isn't really a big deal because uh, for the cooling type problems, we're going from uh, a higher number to a lower number. So let's say if I have 35 here and I'm going to a lower environment, which is eight, so that's fine, right? But when we switch it, and now we're talking about um, heating, we notice that this number here is negative. And so if we keep this, um, keep this relationship as it is, and this number ends up being negative, then what that essentially does for our model is it changes this plus to a minus. And now with this being a minus, we have some ambient temperature that we need to climb toward. OK, so in order to do that, what we have to do is have a minus here and have this um, continuously increase until um, when T is and let, let's say uh, k is going to be negative here and we go to infinity well we know e raised to the negative infinity if we just keep on getting higher and higher and higher but this exponent is negative it's going to approach a value of zero so the highest value that um, the temperature that we're trying to the model or the object that we're trying to model what its temperature is the highest that it can be is that and the only way that's going to work is if uh, this number here is negative if our uh, constant k is negative. And the only way to make that not be so, in other words, if I want this to be positive, then what I have to do is implement that, hey, I actually want absolute value of this, okay? And so some models, um, that tends to, they tend to actually emphasize the absolute value part. Uh, so other models say, hey, they don't forget about it and they don't even give you this little tidbit of information here and uh, just kind of you know, leave it out. Okay? And so if, you're, if you've looked at other types of models, or other ways of trying to do it, doing this before you've watched this particular video, now you know why that is. Uh, the other thing I want to explain is where this whole um, the reason why we do absolute value of this or why we can do it, why is that even possible? So um, in short, it's kind of out of the scope of what we're talking about in this course, but this particular equation actually comes from a, a solution to a differential equation uh, that kind of models what's really going on in this. And in the process of solving that differential equation, you have a step in there uh, that basically assumes that this difference here is going to be um, the absolute value of the difference of those two uh, expressions, uh, the T sub zero and the T sub a. And so because of that, it kind of leaves it up to chance on um, if you want it to be non-negative, meaning this T sub zero minus T sub a. And if you don't do that, then of course, what has to change here is uh, the role of K in terms of how I defined it here. So um, 
my point in saying all that is that in the way that I actually wrote this down here, um, it would probably be more correct to say that if I don't use the absolute value, then this whole thing about the K being positive or the K being negative um, will initially uh, not seem to, to work out. But if I was to put the absolute values on it, then, of course, everything would change and you would end up getting some positive value um, as the result. So uh, that's kind of what's going on with that. Um, for what you need to know now, if you're watching this video, um, that doesn't really need to concern you. Uh, the main thing here is that you get a correct value for K, depending upon um, whether you want to look at this as whatever it is or if you want to look at it in terms of its absolute value. If you look at it in terms of its absolute value, then these rules will definitely apply here. If you don't look at this in terms of its absolute value, then um, your K is probably always going to stay negative okay, because of that. And this plus sign is going to change to a mi addition sign is going to change to a minus sign to kind of compensate for that. So that's that's the main point. All right. So let's uh, go back to our problem and finish uh, trying to solve. It. All right. So now that we uh, now know why this value of K looks uh, the way that it does, uh, we're going to go ahead and just state what our final model would be. And again, I'm just going to keep with the model that I have. So our T sub A, which is our ambient temperature, that's going to be 35. Um, and then, of course, we have plus the difference in between uh, the thermometer reading, which is 8 and 35, will be a minus 27. So here's what I was talking about before. Um, that if this value K is going to be negative, then that means that this plus sign here um, will have to switch to a minus sign to be able to compensate uh, for the fact that we're actually doing heating instead of cooling. So we have that and now we have E raised to the K and this K is just one third natural log of 20 over 27 times T and I'm just going to write the T here and uh, we know that of course, we could rewrite this in another way, or I could kind of take the one third T out altogether, and we would express it this way where that T divided by three is in the exponent. And of course, uh, we know that all this business here, the E raised to the natural log of 20 divided by 27 is just 20 divided by 27. So we have this is 35 minus 27 times 20 divided by 27, all that raised to the T divided by 3. Now, um, I know I haven't mentioned this in the other two examples, but I do want to mention this now that whenever you're dealing with this, um, because of order of operation, you can't go here and say, hey, these two 27s reduce to 1. Okay. That's incorrect because, of course, with, uh, with order of operation, we have to take this whole entire um, base here, raise it to whatever this is, and then afterwards multiply it times the 27. Okay, So um, I'm assuming that, that you know that, but just in case um, you're kind of confused on that and you may have forgotten about the order of operations, I wanted to mention that. So now we have what our model for this situation is. Uh, for temperature in terms of time. And now all we have to do is plug in five for T to figure out what our answer is going to be. Okay, and So that's pretty simple. Just take all of this and replace a T. Uh, we put a five. And if you were to plug that into uh, your calculator, you would get roughly 18.62. Uh, six five two six six seven and so that would be degrees Celsius um, and again uh, you probably don't have to be that accurate but um, I like being that accurate so that whatever you're asked to do as far as uh, rounding off you'll have enough numbers to be able to do that okay so that is what uh, part a of this example is 
So if we look at part B, it's just asking us for the same thing, but instead of five minutes, 10 minutes, okay? So I'm going to quickly do that here. So we do the exact same thing. Um, no need to solve for or figure out what our model is going to be because we've already done it. Uh, we just replace uh, the T when it's five, we just replace that with 10, okay? So nothing really fancy about that. And of course, if we were to plug that into our calculators, we would get uh, roughly 25.070717745 degrees Celsius, okay? And that is all for this example. So uh, we have one last example that I'm going to do. And uh, I call this the CSI problem because uh, what we're going to see is how we could actually uh, figure out the time of death of someone that was unfortunately murdered um, out one night. And um, we can we can see that what we know about solving exponential and logarithmic equations here that we're actually doing is the way that they figure those things out. So let's go ahead and move on to that example. So for our fourth and final example here, uh, we have that the police arrive at the scene at 3 a.m. and immediately record uh, the body's temperature, which was uh, 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, got a situation where it's early in the morning for whatever reason, someone was uh, murdered and the police are arriving on the scene. At 4.30 a.m., after thoroughly inspecting and fingerprinting the area, they ag again took the temperature of the body, which had dropped to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So you notice, as soon as they get on the scene, they make a measurement of what the body's temperature is, and then they make another measurement again um, later, which is like an hour and a half later, and it ends up being... 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that's going to be important because we're going to need that information to find out the things that uh, we need to to be able to get our model together. Okay. So um, continuing on, the temperature of the crime scene has remained at a constant 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So we know that this is going to be our ambient temperature. We, we already know that. So what we want to do is determine when the person was murdered. And of course, we want to assume that the body temperature of the person at time of death was 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And that just basically tells us that the, the victim was healthy at the time. And so uh, we want to give the time to the nearest minute and we're going to answer in this form here. Okay. So let's first collect all of the info that was given to us. And then from that, um, we're going to go through a series of steps to be able to solve this. Now, I will say that this problem is not as straightforward as the other three examples that we've done, but you'll see how we need to know what we did in the first three examples to be able to do this. One, okay. All right. So let's start off with uh, given information here. So we're just going to say given info. So. The first thing that we know here is that time t equals zero um, is going to be the time when the person was murdered. Okay. And I know there was other things that were explicitly given in the problem, but I want to state this first because um, it's going to be important to us in how we model this. Uh, to, to make it easier to do. So, because, uh, and the reason I'm saying that is here, we're trying to figure out a time in which um, that person died there. And um, we're going to kind of back into that. Okay. And we're assuming that the, the person's temperature was going to be at 98.6 degrees at time t equals zero. Okay. And so we're, we're just using it. All right, so next I'm going to define another alternative time here, and I'm going to put it as T bar. And this is going to be the time that 
passes between when person was murdered and first measurement of temperature. I'm just going to say first measure of temp by police. Okay. And so the reason I'm making up two different times here is because the when the police get on the scene, uh, they make a temperature of or whoever it is, uh, probably the EMT people, whenever they uh, you know, take the temperature of uh, the person that has obviously been murdered at this point, um, their time t equals zero at the time um, is going to be that measurement whenever they got it and the person was at 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, And so that's why I say we're going to have to kind of bag into this because we're going to have to take the information that we're given um, per when they showed up to be able to basically get a value for K. And then after we get a value for K, then we can kind of rephrase the problem and use this time T equals zero using this new um, initial temperature, okay? Because this is going to be the initial temperature uh, that we use to be able to get the value of K. And this is going to be the, uh, the other temperature that we use, okay? But once we find out that value K, then we can go back to the original problem and say, all right, well, what I really wanted to know is how much time passed um, between when the body was 98.6 degrees and when it was 91 degrees. Okay, And so that's why we have uh, this time T equals zero here. We're defining it this way. Okay, And so my point here is that um, if I was to kind of make it plain, if I said this, that's actually what the T sub zero, I'm oh, sorry, uh, not that, yeah, did the wrong thing here. Yeah. So this is what this time T equals zero is when I just have regular T, but here, this is, um, let me make that equal zero like that. So if I do it like this, that's going to be 91 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So the T bar and the T, um, we're using two different similar looking models to be able to, to model what's going on, okay? But this is the, the, the gist of it. We're gonna work on this first to figure out um, essentially what our value K is from this particular model. And then from that model, we're gonna take that value K and put it over here where time is going to be defined differently, which means that our initial temperature is gonna be defined differently as well, okay? So uh, in a nutshell, that's what we're doing here. And when I write out these steps, that is the goal that we're after. Okay. All right. So let's uh, continue on because we do have other things that were given to us here. So uh, we have these first two, which was, of course, time at T equals zero and what T bar represents. So we're going to give some more information here. So we know that if we were to model um, this problem with the T bar type of time, at 91 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And that's going to be the, the body temp at 3 a.m. And let me make sure that I'm clear here. So just like how I wrote over here, that's going to be when this is equal to zero. So 91 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And we also know here that same thing when T bar is going to be equal to 90 
And this 90 here means 90 minutes. So uh, if you remember back in our problem, we first got a measurement at 3 a.m. of 91 degrees Fahrenheit, and then at 4.30 a.m., which is 90 minutes later, we get a measurement of 82. So that's what I'm writing down here. Okay. And here we also need to um, restate that if we're modeling our temperature with just regular time uh, without the bar on the T, then of course this is going to be 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And again, I've, I've already explained um, why we have the, the T versus the T bar. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and uh, work the problem. So our step one, we're going to use this information here, which is the T when T bar is equal to zero, it's 91 degrees Fahrenheit. And the temperature when T bar uh, is 90, and of course, that's going to be 82 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to use that to find K. And um, since the body is cooling down, uh, we expect for K to be negative. And um, as we talked about before, we expect the and I'll go ahead and write it here. We expect this uh, plus sign here to remain a plus sign uh, because we're actually cooling down. Okay, because we're cooling down, the um, this ambient temperature here is going to be lower than the temperature of the object in this case, which is the body. Okay. All right, so let's use that information to figure out what we need to. So essentially what this means here is that T sub zero in our first model is going to be 91 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So if we put that together, I'm just gonna rewrite all this here. We know that the ambient temperature here, um, that's going to be the 77 degrees. And I didn't write that here, so let me go ahead and state that. So the T sub A is going to be 77 degrees and the T sub zero is going to be 91 degrees, okay? So if we look at it that way, then it's going to be 77 plus 91 minus 77 e raised to the k and here the time that we have in minutes is that when t is 90 i'm going to erase this t here and put a 90 in there when this is 90 all this is equal to 82 okay and so now you see from here how we have enough information to find out what our value of K is. Now note that um, I know we're kind of doing two different models to get to the answer, but K is going to be the same no matter what model that we use. So um, no matter how we you know, offset time or whatnot, um, our body is going to be cooling down at the same rate, regardless of how we set the time. And so that's why uh, we can kind of take this approach. All right, so now that we have all that set, um, let's go ahead and figure out what we need to. Um, of course, we know that 91 minus 77, that's just going to be 14. And so here we'll have 82 is equal to 77 plus 14e raised to the 90k and we'll need to subtract 77 from both sides here and 
course, this would be 5 on the left-hand side, 14e raised to the 90k on the right-hand side. And so, of course, to solve for k, we'll first divide both sides by 14. And then take the natural log of both sides. And of course, this right hand side here would just be 90K. And then from there, um, we'll just see here that we have natural log of 5 over 14 is equal to 90K. And we divide both sides by 90 to get our final answer here. Okay. And so that's what our value of K is. So now that we have um, our value of K, what we are concerned with at this point is using this value of K in our new model, okay? And of course, what's going to change in our new model is that our, our ambient temperature is going to stay the same, but our um, initial temperature of the body is going to be different now because uh, we're actually going to tie in the fact that the body should have been at 98.6 degrees whenever the person first got murdered. Okay, so that's where the, the step two comes in. So I'm going to write it like this. Step two. Use T, big T of T is equal to zero which is just going to be this 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And T of blank, 91 degrees. And notice that I don't have the T bars on here now. I just have just regular T. So we're going to kind of do this model over, but reset the initial uh, temperature of the body to be 98.6 degrees and we're going to act like we don't know what um, this value t here is when it's 91 degrees now because we're referencing everything to this initial temperature instead of 91 degrees fahrenheit being the initial temperature okay i'm going to say we want to do all this to find out t Okay, so if we do that, then we'll just say this now is going to be uh, T sub zero plus, sorry, uh, that's T sub A. So let's change that. So I got T sub A plus T sub zero minus T sub A, E raised to the KT. Of course, our ambient temperature stays the same. Our initial temperature now is 98.6 degrees minus 77. And then E raised to the uh, K, and we know that um, this K here is the one divided by 90 natural log of five over 14. And then all that multiplied by T. Okay, and we know here that we can kind of rewrite this. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So we're going to write this as E raised to the five, divided, uh, natural log of five divided by 14. And then here, this will be T divided by 90. Okay. And of course, all this inside the brackets here, we know that this is just a fancy way of saying five divided by 14. So we end up having 77 plus. And so now we have to take the difference in between 98.6 and 77, which is 21.6. And this will be all that times five over 14 raised to the T divided by 90, okay? And so now at this point, um, we have what we need. 
because remember all of this is just equal to this here and what we want to know now is whenever the temperature is 91 degrees what is t okay so therefore what we want to know is when we let big t of little t equal 91 and we have all this in place here what is going to be our value of t and notice that we've actually done uh, this type of problem before okay um, it hasn't taken us this long to get to there get to this point but we've done this before so we're going to start off by of course subtracting both sides by 77 and that will go here we'll get 21.6 times 5 raised to 14 2 over 9 and we know that uh, 91 minus 77 that's 14 so next we need to divide 21.6 on both sides so that's 14 divided by 21.6 5 over 14, all that raised to the t over 90. And so uh, from this point, we need to get uh, t by itself here. So how we can legally do that is we can take the natural log of both sides. So I uh, just kind of save some space here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we'll have natural log of this equals natural log of all of that and at this point this allows us to take that uh, t divided by 90 and pull it out in front so we'll have natural log of 14 divided by 21.6 equals t over 90 times natural log of 5 over 14 and uh, from here we'll multiply both sides by 90 to get rid of this fraction here and that reduces to 1 and so now uh, we also know that this 90 can be put back into the exponent here um, you don't have to do that um, I just do it because I think it's easier to express it that way and let you see how you can use those logarithm properties. And then from there, of course, the final thing that we need to do now is just divide both sides of our equation by this natural log of 5 over 14. So I'll, uh, I won't write it to the side there. I'll do it like this. And of course, all of this and all that reduces to one. And I just got T by itself. And so here T is just going to be natural log of all of this business here. Uh, natural log of 14 divided by 21.6. And the 14 divided by 21.6 is raised to the power of 90 over natural log of 5 14 okay and so notice here that this 14 divided by 21.6 is a proper fraction raised to the power of 90 which is just going to be an even smaller proper fraction so this natural log expression here is going to be negative divided by another negative natural log value so a negative divided by negative is a positive and so that's kind of what we're looking for there so this value here is roughly 37.9045 minutes. And so um, at this point, we have enough information to figure out um, what happened. And so what I'm going to say here is that the person was basically um, dead about 38 minutes before the police got it okay and so now to answer our question if they measured 
the uh, the person's body at 3 a.m., but the person was actually dead 38 minutes before then. Then, of course, uh, we know that 3 a.m., uh, basically minus uh, 38 minutes. And so it's minus 38 minutes there. And of course, to uh, be able to actually do that, we know that's just going to be uh, 2.22 in the morning. But if you're wondering how do I actually write that out computationally, you do it like this. So you say that 3 a.m. is going to be the same as being at 2 a.m. plus another 60 minutes. And then you subtract that. And of course, 60, um, if you go through the whole deal here, um, 60 minus 38 is going to be 22. And then, of course, um, 2 minus 0 is 2. And so that's how you get that the time of death is actually 2.22 a.m. Uh, that particular morning. Okay, and so that is how we actually use solving exponential and logarithmic equations to be able to answer questions like this. So um, if you ever see that on like one of those CSI shows or um, let's say in real life when they, when they say, hey, the person was you know, dead at this particular time, then uh, you kind of know how they made those calculations. All right, so with that being said, I know this has been a long video, but I wanted to make sure that I had all these examples in in one video so that uh, once you watch this, this will be pretty much, um, at least in my opinion, all that you'll need to watch to get a good, a good example on how to use Newton's law of heating and cooling uh, based upon the equation that comes out as a result of the actual differential equation where this comes from. And of course, um, the actual differential equation is kind of outside of the scope of this particular video and uh, you can use other resources to kind of delve into that if that's something that you're interested in so again thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video take care